Hello students, in this session, let us understand the basics of experiment number 3 in your software engineering lab. So, according to your syllabus, the experiment number 3 is to study and usage of any design phase case tool. Okay, so, we are going to talk about one of the language called as UML, which will be helping us to draw the designs for the software that we are developing. And to draw these designs, we have n number of case tools, we will have a list of all these case tools also. So, let us start to understand what exactly do you mean by this UML. UML is basically abbreviated as Unified Modeling Language. It is a language which will help us to draw the pictures of the software that we are developing. Okay? Now, what is the purpose of this UML? UML basically helps us or the pictures that we draw using UML basically helps the different categories of the people who are involved in the software development. It will help the users to understand what is going on, it will help the developers to understand how to develop the software, it will help the testers to understand how to test the software and all. So, everybody will be able to understand very clearly what is going on in the software development using these pictures which are drawn using the UML language. UML is Unified Modeling Language. So, let us talk about the various case tools. Case is nothing but your computer aided software engineering tool. This is basically a software which will help us to draw these UML diagrams. And we have n number of case tools th that are there in the market starting from rational rows up till the umbrella. But we will be using one of the software which is called as the star UML. So, using star UML software, we will be drawing the diagrams. So, before drawing the diagrams, let us understand what are the various types of parts or the components that we have in these diagrams. So, basically UML consists of three main parts, things, okay, you have the things, you have the relationships and you have the diagrams, okay. Things are nothing but the objects or the people or uh, the interaction, I mean the communication or the actions that we do in our particular software, okay. Basically, it involves the people, the objects, the structures that are involved in the particular software that we are developing. So, these things are again broadly classified into structural things, behavioral things, grouping things and annotation things. Once the things are completed, the next part of our UML is relationship. Relationships talk about how the people or the objects that are there under the things of your software communicating with each other or interacting with each other. So, under relationships, you have four major relationships, dependency, association, generalization and realization. Once the things and the relationships are finalized, we will move to the next part which is called as the diagrams. There are totally nine different types of diagrams in UML. Each diagram talks about how these things and relationships are connected with each other from different, different perspectives. Okay? So, let us start with the first one which are called as the things in UML. So, things as I have told you, they, those are nothing but the main elements that you have in your software that you are developing. It could be the people, it could be the items, the static parts or the action that you are performing, anything could be a thing. So, things are broadly classified into four major types, structural, behavioral, grouping and annotation. Let us talk about the first one which is called as the structural things. Structural things are nothing but the static objects that you have in your software development. Okay, you will be having some static objects like if you take an ATM system, okay, a ATM machine is a static object, okay, cash dispenser is a static object, a CC camera is a static object. So, structural things talk about the static objects that we are using in our software okay, that belong to our software that we are developing. So, under stat, uh, st structural things, the first one you have is class. Class talks about all the objects which are having common features, okay. Classes basically represent the various objects which are having common features, right. Like for example, you have car. Let you take any type of car. Every car has common features like color, engine, type, model, okay. So, a car is represented as a class. All these objects together are clubbed as a class which will be having common features together. And this is basically the representation of class when you are drawing the UML diagram. Okay, it is a rectangular box which is divided into three rows. The next one you have is interface. Interface talks about what are the various methods that we are using in the classes. Like for example, 
if you take a class called as car the car will be having various methods like the drive mode the acceleration mode the brake mode so these methods that we are using in the class are called as interfaces and the interface is represented like this when you are drawing the diagrams. The next one you have is component. Component is nothing but a piece of the software that you are developing. Say suppose you are developing a web page in that you have a login component. Okay. So, what your login will do? It will ask your user to login or you know it will uh, check whether all the fields are filled by the user. If they are not filled it will throw an error. Okay. So, component represents that piece of the software and this is how your component is shown in a pictorial format. The next structural thing you have is the node. Node is basically a computer or the application, the computer or a piece of uh, box in which your application is running. So, you can take server, you can take database or you can say a computer in which your application is loaded. Okay. So, if it is a web application then you talk about servers. Okay. If you talk about a mobile application you talk about a mobile. So, it is a computer or a platform in which your application is node, node loaded that is called as node and this is how the node is represented in the form of a picture. Talking about the next one you have is behavioral things. Behavioral things talk about how exactly the different uh, components of your computer are interacting with each other. It talks about when an event occurs in the compute in the system or the software that you are developed, how is it reacting over the time. In, under behavioral you have the first one which is called as interaction which talks about the sequence of messages that are exchanged between one object to the other object and this is the representation of your interaction. The next one you have is state machine. It talks about in which state your object is. Like for example, if you take a car, okay, car has a door. So, the door can be open or close. So, it talks about the state of the door of a car and this is how your state is being represented in a diagrammatic format. So, this is behavioral. Let us talk about the third one which is called as grouping things. Grouping things are nothing but combining the classes and interfaces together. Okay. Uh, just like packages. So, we include hash include stdio.h. It is a package. What, what do you have in stdio.h? You have list of all printf, scanf fu functions that are written inside it. So, such type of representation of packages is given like this in a pictorial format. These are package thing, grouping things. The next one you have is annotational things. So, sometimes we need to give extra information related to our particular software in the form of comments or notes. Okay? Then we will be using this annotational things and this is the symbol for your annotational thing. So, this is all about your things. Let us talk about relationships that we have in UML. Basically, you have four different types of relationships. The first relationship you have is dependency. When one particular object is dependent on another particular object, the connection that you give between these two objects is nothing but your dependency. Okay, you can take an example like car is dependent on engine. If the engine is not there inside the car, the car will not run. Okay, so, this is called as dependency and this is the symbol that you will be using for dependency. The next one you have is association. Association is giving a general connection or the establishment between one object to the another object. It talks about how two things are connected together, generally a class and an object. Under association, you have a normal association, you have a directed association. So, in directed association, you give association relationship when one object is dependent on another object. Okay? Like for example, order depends on the product. The next one you have is normal association. When you, when you, you give connection between two objects, when both of them are connected with each other, but they can run independently also. Like for example, doctor and patient. Doctor, patient is dependent on doctor, but patient can see any doctor, doctor can see any patient. Okay? So, such type of relationship is given a normal association. The next one you have is generalization. Generalization is when you have n number of objects which come under a broad category. Like for example, you have different types of cars. You have uh, sedan cars, you have SUV cars, all of them come under the ca car category. Okay? So, when you have such type of uh, hierarchy level, then you go for this generalization and this is the symbol. The last type of relationship you have is realization. So, realization is basically talking about how your interface 
is behaving with the class okay then you go for this realization like for example you have a class called as flyable okay uh, now you you have an interface called as flyable so you you select the classes like birds aeroplanes because birds also fly aeroplanes also fly both of them will download that method which is called as flyable so in such cases you use the relationship which is called as realization and that is the symbol for your realization now let's talk about the last part of your uml which is called as the diagrams we have we have totally nine different types of diagrams in uml as you can see here talking about the first diagram which is called as the class diagram class diagram talks about how the different classes are connected with each other inside your component so atm is a class okay then cash dispenser is your class so different different classes each class again consist of various objects of similar attributes okay so how these classes are connected together if you are drawing it in a pictorial format then that is the class diagram next you have is the object diagram object diagram talks about the real items that we are using in our software like for example we use a debit card it is a real item which is used by the customer so if you are trying to show how this debit card is interacting with the computer then you use the object diagram the next one you have is use case diagram this will talk about how the people inside your are interacting with your particular system what are the messages that are being exchanged between the computer and the user okay so that is called as the use case diagram okay after that this is how your class diagram is represented as we will draw class diagrams for all the projects that you have in your syllabus this is how your object diagram is and this is how your use use case diagram will look like okay we will see into the details in the next session the next diagram you have is the sequence diagram which talks about the sequence of messages that are passed from one place to the other place like for example you can say user has requested for cash to the atm machine atm machine sent a request to the bank bank has responded with a request and now the atm machine is giving the amount to the user to show this representation we use the sequence diagram the next one you have is component diagram component diagram talks about how the different parts of the computer are connected together okay so like for example you have the atm machine you have the software inside the atm you have the bank server how are the how are these connected with each other if you are trying to represent it in the form of a diagram then that is the component diagram the next one you have is activity diagram this will talk about what are the steps that are taken by the user for a particular action okay say suppose he wants to withdraw amount so what he has done he has inserted the card entered the pin okay he has entered the amount and then he has collected the cash as well as the receipt so the, if you want to represent it in the form of a diagram then it is activity diagram so this is how your sequence diagram will look like and this is the component diagram and this is the activity diagram now let's talk about the seventh diagram which is called as the state chart diagram if you want to show what is the different state of a object inside your particular system then you can go for state chart diagram like for example you can say that atm system will be idle if if the customer does not enter any in, uh, card any debit or a uh, normal card okay so that if you want to represent it in the form of a diagram then you use this state chart diagram the next one you have is collaboration diagram this will talk about how different parts are collaborating and uh, uh talking about themselves whenever a transaction is generated by the customer like for example user has in inserted the card okay he has entered the amount that he wants to get how the atm bank and all are connecting with each other is represented with the help of the collaboration diagram the next one you have is deployment diagram it talks about how the physical parts of your software are connected with each other like for example atm system is in hyderabad okay its server is in delhi so you give doc, one particular node as atm one particular node as the server and you show how it is connected from different different places okay so if you want to show how physical parts are located uh, while you are deploying your particular software then you go for the deployment diagram okay so this is how your state chart diagram will look like this is your collaboration diagram and this is your deployment diagram so these are the various types of things relationships and diagrams that you have in uml among all these nine diagrams in the next 
two sessions we will be talking about four important diagrams which you have to draw for the respective project that you have selected. Thank you.